Sora AI is set to take the world by storm when it launches in 2024. And from what we've seen in the demos, it might just blow the competition out of the water. But before we get ahead of ourselves, today we're gonna to be diving into the world of video AI. Specifically, we're comparing the platforms of today that are currently available and allow you to unleash your creative potential. I've personally tested each of these platforms and I'm not holding back. We'll explore the good, the bad, and the downright ugly of each and every tool. By the end, we're gonna determine which platforms are worth your time and which may be heading to the chopping block once Sora AI hits the scene. Let's get started. First up, we have Pika at Pika.art. Pika is an innovative idea to video platform designed to transform creativity into dynamic video content. It offers a variety of features to cater to different creative needs, including text to video, image to video, and video to video transformations. Let's talk about some of the things it does really well. First, I wanna give Pika credit for trying to do more than your average text to video platform. Most platforms rely on pans and zooms across the image with minor motion to create a video. However, Pika actually analyzes the objects in the scene and attempts to recreate motion as you'd see them in real life. It doesn't always go perfectly, but each time you send another prompt through, there's just a feeling of excitement knowing something is going to go either really right or really wrong. Next up, I wanna give them credit for adding aspect ratio as a feature. It's nice to be able to generate video in any format required, whether that's landscape, portrait, one-to-one, -one, or pretty much anything else that you'd need. Now, unfortunately, that's where the pros end. Let's get into some of the cons. First up, the platform is just too inconsistent. You're only allotted a certain amount of tokens and you can expect to generate the same prompt three to four times before you can actually expect a working iteration of it. It can be frustrating blowing credits on even some of the most simplest tasks. Additionally, the new hyped up lip sync feature that Pika recently released is sort of a flop. I tried testing limits with a few creative asks, which I thought would be really cool. 70% of the time, it wasn't even able to recognize the face. When it did work, it wasn't really a quality render, as you can see in this example here. Subscribe to the channel, or else. You really need to provide a clear image of the subject to produce any results. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate my lip sync right now? I was incredibly disappointed in the lack of animation with the rest of the face. There's already some tools on the market that can do this, like DID or even HeyGen that allow you to create video AI avatars. And my hope was that Pika would be able to add some more animation to the faces to really bring them to life. However, I just wasn't able to recreate it with any sort of consistency. So do I see a place for Pika in the future? If I'm being honest, I don't see much of a future for this platform right now. Their newest release falls behind some of the technology already available. And if Soar delivers on what it's promising, I can't see a reason to ever to really turn to Pika again. Now, things are changing all the time and I'd be happy to be wrong here. I want to use Pika in my projects, but the majority of the time, I just find myself being disappointed. A bit harsh, I know, but I am rooting for them and more competition just makes everything better. So, come on Pika. Next up, let's explore the capabilities of Runway ML. Runway offers a suite of innovative tools designed for the imagination, including text to video, image to video, video to video, text to image, image to image, and motion brush, along with a whole suite of editing tools. These tools are all powered by AI models capable of understanding and generating a bunch of different content and iterations. Runway has a lot to like about it. Although its text to video generation may not match what Sora is expected to bring, it is jam packed full of extra features. You can almost consider Runway more of a video editing tool right now than it is just purely a content generation engine. I wanna call out a few of my most favorite features. First up, we have remove the background. Now I know it's possible to do all this with maybe some other tools or a green screen, but I don't know how to do any of that. I want it to be simple and Runway does just that. I was blown away by how easy it was to remove the background from pretty much any video that I uploaded. And what's even cooler is you can then re-add another video or background to it to quickly just replace any background that you need. It can add some real flair to your video. And like I said, you can do this all within just a few minutes. This is just one of my favorite, but there are so many different editing tools within Runway ML that I'm sure a bunch of people just aren't aware of. So I'd highly recommend checking out the platform for yourself and playing with some of these other features. Another thing I love about Runway ML and it's really, really promising technology is their video to video creation. 
Right now, it's probably better for more abstract pieces of art, but if they continue to improve on this, this can be an incredible piece of software. Check out this one example I tried to recreate of a baseball pitcher. To provide some context, I recorded myself going through the pitching motion, then I uploaded it to Runway and asked for it to recreate the scene. It's a really complex movement, and I was pleasantly surprised to see it match it frame for frame up until the very end. Also, if you want to see one of the coolest AI supported videos out there, check out this one. It's incredibly well done using Runway's video to video processing, and it's also hilarious. Another real cool feature is the motion brush. It allows you to be specific with your motion in a scene and control what is moving. They continually improved on this feature and I can only imagine it becoming more and more useful as time goes on. All right, now onto some of the cons of the platform. Now, if you're looking to really add motion to your video, Runway ML probably isn't it. The majority of the time, it'll choose to pan, zoom, or rotate to create the motion effect versus actually trying to make the image move as it would in real life. It's not bad by any means, but for those saying it's disrupting Hollywood, I think let's wait a few years and then we'll see. Another con is similar to Pika, the credit model is an understandable one, but it can be really frustrating to waste credits on iterations as you try to create a useful piece of content. I'm sure generations will get cheaper with time and it will become less of an issue, but it's just something that I want to call out. It's incredibly frustrating just trying to create very, very simple images or videos and it just comes out totally unusable. And knowing that you spent credits that you paid for on that is just not a great user experience. All right, so where do I see Runway in the future? Runway does so much more than just video generation. I'd argue their editing features are almost more impressive than any of the generation software. Additionally, the ability to control and fine tune motion with aspects of your video, along with a host of other quality of life features, paints a bright path for Runway's future. If they can continue to improve on the video to video feature, as well as advance the editing capabilities within the platform, then there's no reason why they won't have a solid foothold moving forward. Onto our third and final tool, Hyper. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. Hyper operates on a little bit of a different model. First off, it's entirely free. You can't pay for it even if you wanted to. And honestly, the quality is on par with a lot of the other platforms in the market right now. And actually, I'd argue sometimes it's even better. Take a look at some of the examples here that we're able to generate with Hyper. It can really produce some great motion and scenes throughout. And it's a really simple and easy platform to use. But as you'll see, there's not a whole bunch to the tool yet. It's still being developed. So let's discuss some of the current drawbacks. Well, first, you can only generate two seconds of video. And this is a huge limitation. It almost renders the platform unusable. You're almost always wanting more once you see what it's created. Additionally, the repainting feature seems to be a bit lackluster at this time. I've tried a few different iterations of this and it just never seemed to come out quite right. So I'm hoping to see it improve in the future as it could be a really useful tool. So getting to future predictions, you'll notice that we spent a lot less time on Hyper and that's because it's really just getting started. There's not a whole lot to talk about right now, but I did want to mention it as a potential tool. The two second video creation really makes it tough to do anything with it at this point, but I will note that they are looking to upgrade that to four seconds. However, it'll be tough to compete with Soar as we've seen some videos generated that are maybe I don't know, 8 to 12 seconds within Sora. So we'll see what the limitations are there, but we're going to need more from all these platforms if they want to compete in any way, shape, or form with Sora. So keep me honest here. Let me know what you think about my review. Did I miss anything? Do you disagree? Or is there more that I just didn't add that you'd like to add to the conversation? If so, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Anyway, that's a wrap for today. So I will catch you all later. Thanks for watching.